region which is responsible for disease causing section from one to another now in this uh, kind uh, in this picture we will be talking about the helicobacter pylori pathogenesis and the overview of this process now there are four different processes sections first is the addition of the helicobacter pylori to the host cell second is minimizing the acid content of the stomach that's the most important and unique point about the helicobacter pylori infection third one is the colonization of the helicobacter pylori and the fourth thing is the, is the degradation of the epithelial cell of the stomach lining by the helicobacter pylori <clears throat> So if we begin with the first case, the attachment of the helicobacter pylori to the surface epithelial cell and in this case what we can see, the bacteria kinds of propel itself using its flagella, it migrates through the mucus layer and the through the glastic fluids and mucus layer, finally it reaches the epithelial cell and it adheres to the epithelial cell using a small extension of cytoplasm called fimbri. So using fimbri they are kind of interacting with the epithelial cells of stomach and also using another molecule called adhesin which is helping this helicobacter pylori to attach with this epithelial cells. Very very important to have that interaction. Now adhesion is the first thing that must occur prior to uh, the engulfment of the bacteria inside. Now once after adhesion is completed <coughs> this bacteria wants to minimize uh, the acidity of the stomach content because we know inside the stomach there are acid uh, secreting cells and those cells are secreting acids outside now the stomach cells uh, now, now, the, now this bacteria uh, this, this uh, helicobacter pylori uh, must neutralize it and they neutralize it by secreting some alkylating agents like ammonia right so in this case we can see they secrete an uh, enzyme called urease Using urease, they can break down urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. Using both ammonia and carbon dioxide, they can reduce uh, the acidity of the stomach, uh, acidity of stomach uh, juice. And as a result of neutralization of acidity, the bacteria can live there for longer period of time. Now, after neutralizing the environment, what they can create, they can create virtually a kind of micro environment. As you can see here, this is kind of changed in different color. So, this, this is a small micro environment uh, produced by the helicobacter pylori by secreting urease is very, very important. Once this micro environment is created, then more and more pylori can come and start to colonize in this particular area. And after a successful colonization, what they can do, they can start to secrete certain chemical mediators, some protein factors, some enzymes like proteases, lipases and some other factors that are going to degrade the host cell epithelial. Right? And after that, they, they start to produce some other factors also with which they can create an inflammatory response inside our stomach lining. And finally, eventually it will cause the mucosal cell death in this stomach lining, right? And this is very important because the stomach is fully covered with the mucosa until and unless they degrade this mucosal epithelial cell, the mucosal cell lining, it won't reach the terminal uh, cells of stomach. So that's very, very important. Now, <coughs> once after reaching uh, the stomach, colonizing onto the stomach, the final point of this cell is to secrete certain chemical factors, certain protein factors, enzymes that are helping this bacteria to, to cause damage to the epithelial cell, right? And what are those factors? Now in this picture we are going to see seven such factors that are causing damage to our host cell. So let's begin. The first thing is the flagella. Using the flagella, this bacteria can usually migrate and move through the the stomach it, it can migrate through the stomach and finally reach the stomach that's very very important and second thing is urease we know this enzyme helps to neutralize the gastric acid by converting urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide now, the third important thing is lipopolysaccharide it helps in the adherence of the host cells and also it causes uh, the inflammatory response because this lipopolysaccharide can act as endotoxin we know it is an LPS layer it can act as endotoxin to produce a toxic shock syndrome and toxic shock conditions in the host body fourth thing is the outer membrane proteins for example here these proteins designated here with this orange color sections these are the outer proteins now these proteins are important 
and it is required to adhere ends of the bacteria to the host cell membrane. The fifth thing is the exotoxin. Now, this bacteria is not that much dependent on the exotoxin for the infectivity, but it may produce exotoxin called a vacuolating toxin. It's uh, the example VAC A or vacuolating toxin A. Secretion of this toxin to the epithelial cells start to degrade the cell and eventually degrades the cell by forming vacuoles inside the cell. Now, the seventh, uh, sixth uh, uh, prop thing here is the secretory enzymes, enzymes like mucinase protease, lipase. Now, protease can degrade protein, lipases can degrade lipids, and mucinase can degrade mucous lining or mucous layer of the uh, stomach. And seventh thing is the type 4 secretion system because we are going to see in this helicobacter pylori, they deliver all those important components inside the host cell via the type 4 injection system. Right? It's kind of kind of syringe-like system as you can see here. It's a kind of cartoon picture, but still it's kind of syringe, molecular syringe, destined to deliver certain important factors inside the host cell. It's kind of pili-like ejection. Okay. And finally, seventh, uh, the e the e effector molecules that are required here are actin remodeling complexes because they need to remodel actin prior to uh, stop the fusion of lysosome with the endosome. And also they want, they need to recruit certain factors which will induce interleukin-8 which eventually uh, cause the inflammatory response as well as they need to uh, produce some apoptosis inhibition factor. And all of these factors are uh, made using that CAG-A which is a part of CAG pathogenicity island. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, major sections of the pathogenicity. Uh, First is adhesion. Now, helicobacter pylori is also uh, very important and for the addition of the helicobacter pylori, it needs to have carbohydrate onto the surface of uh, the host cell membrane. So, it, it must have the carbohydrates or lipids, but it usually interacts with this carbohydrates, host cell carbohydrates and lipids using uh, certain uh, adhesin molecules. For example, one such adhesin molecule is BAB-A or BABA. Using this BAB A molecule, it can interact with a Lewis B antigen displayed by the surface of stomach epithelial cells. So, it's a typical example of the addition of Helicobacter pylori with the epithelial cell. Then, the inflammation for the inflammation to occur, they require this type 4 secretion system. Using type 4 secretion system, this Helicobacter pylori can uh, secrete uh, its own peptidoglycan segment of its own cell wall. So, it can de it cut its own peptidoglycan uh, section of from its own cell wall and secrete this or inject this peptidoglycan inside this host tissue or host cell. So, that host cell start to develop a uh, kind of mm, start to express certain factors against it. Factors like interleukin 8 against it. Now, the injected peptidoglycan can be recognized by the cytoplasmic pattern recognition receptor or immune sensors. For example, here such immune sensor is NOD1. After recognizing uh, this uh, section uh, by NOD1, they start to secrete. They start to secrete uh, certain factors uh, like interleukin 8, which call upon many more uh, immune cells like. Uh, like macrophages, like neutrophils and other important lymphocytes molecules so that the inflammation is result. Okay. So, you can see here the result of inflammation that secreting all those factors are important to bring upon the IL-8 and other factors to finally cause it. Now, <clears throat> the type 4 secretion system uh, uh, also injects the CAG pathogenicity island uh, protein CAG-A into the stomach's epithelial cell which disrupts the cytoskeleton of this stomach epithelial cell. So, everything is important. You know, remember I have talked about the cytoskeleton remodeling molecules, uh, apoptosis, apoptosis inhibitory molecules, it may cause cancer if it is uh, triggering that. So, many things can occur in this process. Now, this CAG-A protein can also regulate the host cell gene transcription. So, it's a kind of controller of this process. You can see here the damaging conditions that are caused by Helicobacter pylori in the in the very terminal stage of the infection. The, the gastric ulcer is a very basic stage, then it can form the gastric tumors. That is very, very dangerous. It's kind of 
a harsh condition they are forming uh, cancerous they are they are going cancerous now other toxic factors produced by helicobacter pylori are besides ammonia there are other factors like vacuoloting cytotoxin a or vac a we have talked about it as well as they can produce phospholipases which can damage uh, those cells and usually the cell membranes okay now there are two related mechanisms by which helicobacter pylori can promote cancer under certain circumstances but still it's under uh, prior investigation one of the machinery it involves the enhanced production of free radicals near the helicobacter pylori as they start to produce these free radicals the increased rate of cell mutation start to occur as a result those cells may turn into cancerous cells it's simple way of transformation now the second possible way is called the perigenetic pathway now it involves the enhancement of the transformed host cell phenotype by means of alteration in the cell proteins such as the adhesin proteins so change in those protein contents is called the perigenetic pathway it's it's because it depends on the gene but directly not gene on proteins or protein 